it's not funny how much I love Harvey because Harvey is wonder. He, he's wonderful. I, I you don't love him. I think I respect. Look me in Harvey. the eye and tell me you don't love Harvey Specter. I don't love Harvey Specter. Am I gonna hate the rest of no, the I'm series? Just, is this Harvey's show or is this Mike Ross's show? It's everybody's show. I hope this becomes Lewis Litt's show. Lewis Litt. You're this episode. Did you love Lewis Litt? This, this episode, episode. Yes. I love Lewis every episode he's in. I was so glad this episode we saw more Lewis. We haven't clapped yet. We haven't clapped. But we should clap for Harvey Specter and Lewis Litt. <laughs> yeah! yeah! Funny? It's going to be so loud whenever I try and edit it. I have to cut that right out. <laughs> Hi, I'm Maggie. And I'm Amanda. And we're sisters in law. law. We're watching Suits one episode at a time. It's a show so nice, I've watched it twice. And a show so great, I'm watching it late. Thanks so much for tuning in. Maggie's never seen it and Amanda's obsessed They don't wear fancy suits, they are casually dressed They are sisters-in-law and they got a show About a law firm drama that aired a few years ago Only suits fans, only suits fans Only suits fans, only suits fans Only suits fans, only suits fans This is season one, episode eight, Identity Crisis. This might have been the episode that you fell in love with Harvey Specter. Big time fell in love with him. I loved him in this episode and did love Lewis Litt. I just, I guess Harvey Specter exists for me as this trope of a human, but I'm not in love with Harvey Specter yet. I kind of want to marry Harvey. I mean, I actually would marry Harvey Specter. You would marry Harvey Specter. It's interesting because it's not who I think I'm normally attracted to. Not normally Harvey Specter, but in this case, very much Harvey Specter. So much. I, if you were writing out descriptions of people, I'd be like, I don't know if Harvey Specter is going to be the one. And he is. He's your one. Yeah. Do you think, I guess, from the internet, and I'm trying to avoid spoilers, but from the internet, people love Harvey Specter. Yeah, there's so many like Harvey fan accounts. And like Harvey quotes and Harvey yes. everything. What would Harvey do? I mean, I should have a hat. It you says, should have a would, hat. What would, what would Harvey do? Or maybe I could just legally change my name to Amanda Specter. Ooh. That'd be fun. I like be, my name That would be, that'd be fun. That would be, be a fun, fun. thing. Mm-hmm. Just to legally change your name. Yeah. If I had a set desk at my office, I would just put a picture of him in a frame. If you know, you know. And if not, people will be like, dang. Look at who she just landed. I'll Photoshop that for you. Will you? Yeah, I will. A picture of me and Harvey together? Yes. Okay, great. I will. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm excited. I'll do anything. I'll do anything for <laughs> for, for, for my sister-in-law. Thank you. You'll Photoshop me. I'll do a me. podcast. I'll Photoshop you, you, you with Harvey Specter. a picture of a, with a fictional character. Okay. Season one, episode eight. Yes. Identity crisis. Before we go to briefs, I'd like to call out. The title is Identity Crisis, Mm -hmm. which is another example of that dang tea sandwich. Oh, no. Identity. Identity. Gosh. Crisis. You never know how horrible you are at saying words until you start a podcast. And then you have to say Say words. You write them and you type them and then you say them and then you think, oh, wow. You know what I'm uncomfortable with? A tea sandwich. A tea sandwich. Not a sandwich that you have when having tea. Which I am very comfortable with. What's your favorite tea sandwich? Cucumber. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's refreshing. Pimento. Is that yours? I do love pimento when it's like homemade. I mean, Price's pimento from the grocery store is fine. I do love a homemade pimento. Mm -hmm. Having been to London and seen all the varieties when you go to tea... Lots more to choose Lots from. Lots more. I feel like when we went to the Adolphus, there were a lot of fun tea yeah, sandwiches. Yeah, we had some fun ones. But I still think I liked the cucumber. It's very refreshing. Very refreshing. Low calorie Classic. commitment. You mm-hmm. know? Simple. It's delicious. It's delicious. Anyways, this one has a tea sandwich in it. Identity. Identity crisis. I have a brief that changes the name. Oh, I'm sure you do. I have one that completely leans in. So okay. Why don't you go? Okay. Okay. You fl- uh, flip the script on us. All right. Fake it till you make it has been Mike's motto all season long. And this episode, others are taking a cue, but mostly Lewis. 
pretending he maybe did indeed kill a man during a deposition. And Rachel, pretending it makes sense to casually announce when and where she lost her virginity during research for a major case. And finally, Mike Ross cementing himself in the Harvard Alumni Network, despite never actually attending with the help of a handy hacker. But will all this faking fail them in the end? I predict there will be consequences. Oh, wow. You just went, you know what? I don't want to even talk about an identity crisis. I am going to, I'm going to rewrite it. It's all about, I guess though, faking it till you make it is kind of identity crisis, but it's more like they're not even thinking of their identity. They're just going with the fake in it. Yeah. I like that a lot. Thank you. You're going to show me up again. No, no, Amanda, your briefs are fantastic. This is a brief brief. Okay. This episode is full of identity crises. <laughs> crises? Crises. Identity crises. I, this episode is full of identity crises. Lewis barely knows who he is when he sends a witness to his deathbed. Harvey doesn't know who he is when he has to work alongside Lewis. And Mike sweats that his cri- the crisis of his identity being discovered will happen once and for all. The only people who truly know who they are in this episode are Jessica, Rachel, and Donna. That's right. The trifecta. Yeah. The trifecta of ladies in the office. The ladies of Pearson Hardman. Okay, let's talk about this episode. Let's is where it. I think I'm really going to have things to say. We're gonna have a, I have a lot to say. I have some good questions. I have some things I want to hear from okay. you. This is a big episode. This episode, I cried in this episode. <gasps> you cried? I cried and in this episode. And you're in it. I am so in it. I am so in it. Okay. And and that's why we were like, oh, maybe we can record a different day. And I was like, no, I really have need to, to record, record right now, now because I need to be able to watch episode nine. Okay. Then I want you to start. Pick your favorite storyline. I don't know how you could do that because ah, they're both so great. Wah. I know. I can't pick. But I'm, um, blah, blah, blah. okay, I'm going to go with Harvey in a hard hat because that has more Lewis in it. <laughs> oh, Photoshop that picture of me with him. <laughs> Harvey in a hard hat yeah. with Amanda getting married. Okay. Okay. This whole Episode starts with lawyers and hard hats for mm-hmm. Stable Shelters, yes. which is this nonprofit that is a part of the firm, the firm's client. There was a huge embezzlement. And so Jessica and Harvey are there to tell the leader of the nonprofit, like, don't worry, we're going to get all your money back. Right. And they they seem really casual there. They're so, it's a very, it's very fun. I wrote, it's great to see them. Uh, in this like change of pace because we see them offsite, but it's still in other law firm offices or the courtroom and everything. This is a very different energy. Mm-hmm. When Harvey says and he leans in, I'm not really a roommate kind of guy, and I just <laughs> thought I could change your mind. Oh my! <laughs> I love the way he said it. It was so charming. He was charming. He's he very seemed charming. he seemed more casual there. He's very casual with her too. Yes, like, like they. It's like they go way back throughout the episode. It's a it. very different, yeah. casual kind of friendship. She's not like a Fortune 500 leader. She's not a merger acquisition for 250 million dollars. You know, like she's a big client, but it seems like they're more casual because it's like, I don't know. And then, uh, Lewis is Michael's caddy. Is that true? No, Lewis is Harvey. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and then, like, Lewis is doing, leading all the research for this. Right. Lewis is in charge of making sure that everything, like, the T's have been crossed, the I's have been dotted, and Harvey is just not giving him the time of day. Because he's with another client that he's, we'll learn about. Yes, he's with another client. Harvey's like, you're my caddy to Lewis. Mm-hmm. He basically says, you're my second. Yes. You're not important. Then Lewis kind of like, laughs to himself but it's a real sad laugh it's sad because he i think he realizes harvey might be right yeah or he certainly feels that way he does feel that way he's like i have to lewis is like i gotta get in i gotta get in and then don is like don't even try it lewis and he apologizes and he tries to say he's a humpback whale and that donna is plankton but donna knows something that happened on june 3rd 1997 yeah june, june 3rd, 3rd june 3rd 1997 yes so i have a question do you okay. know where you were in on June 3rd, 1997? Okay, June 3rd, 1997. I would have been in school. Hmm? Summer school? That's, no, it's Flag Day, around Flag Day. Okay. Um, and you, schools are still in session yep. in New York. Oh, uh-huh. wow. Okay. In the beginning of June. And 1997, I would have been in third grade. So I would have probably been practicing for Flag Day performance. Um, the third grade song, I think, was when we got to do the drums. Okay. Um, so that's where I would have been, right around then. 
Okay. Nothing embarrassing, nothing humiliating, nothing Donna could hold over my head for the rest of my life, you okay. know? Donna could hold something over my head based oh. on where I was June 3rd, 1997. <gasps> Do you know where you were? I know exactly where when I was. When you heard that date where you're like, oh my gosh. I know where I was. Where? I was on my senior trip. I had just graduated from high school <gasps> and I was in Cozumel without my parents. <sighs> You were allowed to do that? We There were some parents who went, just not mine. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, and you can drink it when you're 18 yeah. in Mexico. So there were, it was either eight or 10 of us that went. I am shocked that Dara and Randy let you go to I Cozumel. Think, I think I didn't give them a choice. <laughs> also, I had <laughs> you just, you. I wore them out about it. I also had just had double knee surgery. So you were like, I need a break. Well, and. I had just gotten off of crutches, so I had my final spring show for drill team and then had double knee surgery, and when I walked across the stage, the coaches had to pick me up to get me, because I was... For your graduation. Yeah, for graduation because oh. of my knees, but they, it was just like the the scope, so it was a pretty quick recovery, and I was young, and then was able to go to Mexico, and I was for sure in Mexico June 3rd, 1997. Oh, I cannot... I still can't believe my in-laws... Let me go to Mexico let, when I was 18. Let you go to, yeah. I wasn't by myself. No, 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 no. I just remember my mom being like, you know what you will never do? A senior year class trip. You will never do that. You will yeah. never, ever, ever go anywhere. Mexico? Absolutely not. Canada? Nuh-uh. Seneca Falls? No. Nothing. Nowhere. Couldn't even go down the street. Wow. There we go. Jealous. June 3rd, 1997. June 3rd, and here I was singing about the American flag. <laughs> right. While you were drinking margaritas. I don't want to say that I was. I was definitely, though. <laughs> I don't want to incriminate myself, but it's legal there. Yeah, I don't I, I, I don't want to say that I was, but I 1,000% was. First, there are a couple of pictures that were printed. Print out pr- printed out from, you know, Walgreens or probably Eckerd's. Eckerd's. Or yeah, if you had an Eckerd's back then. Uh, those pictures from throwaway cameras. Like, I know of one specifically. Do you have it still? Mm-hmm. I'll see if I can find it. We can post it. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yes, please. Anyways, that's where I was. There was one thing you did skip over that you alluded to in your brief. When it's all hands on deck oh. for this research. Yes. And they're talking about Greece. Uh-huh. And Rachel says, oh, Greece? Uh, That's where Greece. my first time was. Which is, she <laughs> so she did not have to tell us that. Nobody I, was asking her. I literally rolled my eyes. They almost got stuck in the back of my head. I was like, Rachel, she wanted so bad to find a reason to talk about sex with Mike. I know. I thought it was so weird. And then he's like, oh, I'm a visual person. I can't help it. Of course, I'm, you know, imagining it. I thought that was super weird. Because I can't think of one time ever in my whole life that I would just be reading something in a room full of associates and say, (laughs) oh, here's my first time. My first sexual experience. (laughs) Wowsy, wowsy. Let me just say that right here when I'm wearing a suit. She was waiting. She was looking for a way to do it. She was looking for any way. It could have been like, oh, French fries. Mm -hmm. I had those once. Yeah. And then I had sex one time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, doesn't matter. It doesn't. Whipped cream. Mm. Mm. Sometimes other people have used that in sexual acts. Would you like to know about my? Like yeah. to know about my first time in Greece? It was a very awkward transition. Thank goodness Lewis is like, knock it off in that situation too. Yeah, he knew. But what was funny to me was like, the way that he came over to them. So she's talking about sex, right? You're like, oh, my first time. And then Lewis goes up and he's like, you guys are really adorable. 40 hours till trial and you're gossiping like two 12-year-olds at sleepaway camp. And it made me think about when I was teaching and mm-hmm. kids would be talking and I would have no idea what they were actually talking about. But I'd be like, hey, knock it off. I get what you're talking about. You know what I mean? Like right. he's trying to be like, I know what you're doing. You're gossiping. But he has no idea what's actually happening, which is that she's telling him about her first time in I Greece. Know. He's kind of oblivious. And he has to depose <laughs> this guy. Perkins is the person they're deposing. And Harvey's supposed to be there with him. Right. He's not because he's, again, busy with Jensen, which we find out you know, later on and you discussed earlier. So Lewis has to do it by himself. He doesn't have to. He could have waited. He could have waited. But he's like, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to do it. He's not going to be the caddy. He's not going to have his secret exposed by Donna. Mm -hmm. He's going to go in. And the way that his entire character shifts Mm -hmm. when he's sitting in that room is like. It's a different person. I know. I wrote down, 
what a bulldog. And then he is called a pit bull by the opposing counsel. So, uh, of the canine. Yeah, I was like, like uh, there's some kind of bull. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he's a, or some kind of he's a bull. dog. He's a bull in a china shop is what he is because he's just in there and the guy's like, can I get water? Can I get water? And he's like, we don't have any water. And he's just like, what about this? You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. And then Perkins. Perkins dies. He dies. He straight up dies. He. Rest in peace. Yeah. I guess he had a heart attack or some. It looked like he was. He thought he was faking it. Lewis said he thought he was faking it. To be fair, we find out that Perkins did not die from Lewis questioning him. Jessica was like, you could like, did you kill him? And Lewis was like, yeah, let's say I killed him. Like he's proud of the fact that the guy died during his deposition. He thinks that makes him big and strong yeah he wants word to get out right that if you get deposed by lewis lit <laughs> you, you will die, die. <laughs> you, you will literally die yes but that's not really what happened the guy just died and then they find out that perkins money was legitimate and that he was innocent they do find that out yeah yeah, yeah. he wasn't guilty after all no so then lewis kind of feels bad well, but he doesn't, Lewis doesn't want to apologize for possibly killing Perkins, but I thought it was interesting that he did immediately apologize to Donna. Oh, interesting. He's like not going to apologize for possible manslaughter. I don't know, manslaughter. It's not manslaughter. It can't it, be manslaughter. It can't be because. Because it was something like physiologically right, 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 right. made him die. Right. But the fact that he's like, I killed a man, you know, like he's like bragging about killing a man, not apologizing for it, feeling no sympathy. But then Donna's like, don't go in there. And he's just like, I'm so sorry, Donna. Which means we really want to know what happened on June 3rd, night. I really got to know. he was also in Cozumel. Oh, my God. He's a little older. Yeah, but he could have still been there. He could have been there. Enjoying been. some bevies. He could have been enjoying Adult some bevies. bevies. Adult bevies. Adult bevies. Maybe he was in Greece. Who knows? So they find out that Perkins' money was legitimate and he wasn't guilty. Then all of a sudden... Lucille is okay with settling because if this is tied up in court, then they won't see money for at least three right. years. And right. she doesn't want to take the, what is it? 10 cents on the dollar. Mm-hmm. But it's that or nothing. You know, it's like the lesser of two evils. And Harvey's like, no, we're going to get this, all of it. Mm-hmm. We're going to get all this money. Don't you worry. Here we go. And Lewis says to all the associates, it's no longer about the crime. It's about the cover up mm. because they think, just because Perkins' money is clean, then they need to figure out how he got it clean. How is his money clean? Because Maslow, is it Maslow or Maslow? I think it's Maslow. It's Maslow, yeah. Maslow is the one, yeah, I have Maslow, uh, is the one who did something dirty. And we, we got to find it. Right, because Maslow is the guy who actually embezzled the money. Perkins was just his right-hand man. Right-hand man. And before that, too, I think Lewis sneaks into Harvey's office when Donna went to the bathroom. And he's playing Queen, mm-hmm. or he's talking about Queen. Mm-hmm. And Harvey says he doesn't think that real musicians wear eyeliner. And I think that's a bad take. That's his opinion. That's his opinion. It stood out to me. I don't agree with his statement. Mm-hmm. I still love him. Yes, I know. I mean, you. I, I'm not asking you to like love him any less. I don't love him any less. Can you defend that? I can't defend it. I don't agree with it, but sometimes when you love somebody, you don't have to agree with everything they say. It's true. It's true. Also, you will come to learn Harvey's taste in music probably doesn't have any kind of musician that's wearing eyeliner. Right. And that's why he's saying that. And it's 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 the theme song to Suits is like Harvey's style. Kind of. And he, well, I mean, you'll have to learn more about it. Oh my gosh. I mean, it becomes a little more important. I did love, though, that Lewis loves Queen. You're surprised? I am. Okay. Because he was such a he was such a pit bull in there, and then I think of Queen is just like so like yeah, let's dance, let's party, let's rock and roll, uh-huh. and like you know like he seems like he's more like everybody get to work, let's do what we need to do. You well, know what I mean? You have a lot to learn about. Lewis. I know, Lewis. I know, but I thought this was such a fun yeah. little little reveal. It was a fun reveal. I loved it. Jessica also says that Harvey needs to work with Lewis. And he does not want to. But Lewis is the best financial crimes guy they got. He really is. He's so good at financial crimes. I'm learning a lot about financial crimes. From Lewis? Yeah. How to solve them or how to start them. (laughs) You know? (laughs) I could commit one, I feel like, now. I know. I mean, you learned a lot. You learned a lot just in this episode about what to do and not to do when embezzling money. (laughs) (laughs) Millions and millions. $200 million or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Harvey goes to... 
Perkins, Perkins funeral. funeral to talk to Perkins' widow. Which is a bold move to do when she's grieving because you don't know what kind of state she's in, like in all the stages of grief. Where right. is she? Right. You don't know. But what we do know is that Harvey is a smooth talker and Harvey so doesn't come across as like trying to get something out of you. And Lewis comes up there like right a, after him. Just a, and everything comes out sideways. Yes. And almost tries to call Miss Perkins on her bullshit and say, well, we I didn't actually kill your husband because we didn't have the fact. I mean, he is he does not handle this in no. the smooth specter way that we wanted it to be handled. Harvey Specter knows well, first of all, I have never seen Harvey though like be fully wrong. But when he's when he's, he's not he's not. <laughs> but he but he also has this grace about him. Even if he's in a sticky situation, he's got a way of building a relationship to get out of it. Now you see why I love him so I much. I mean, I can see why you appreciate it. Versus Lewis is like I didn't do that. That's the fact of the matter. Black and white. I'm here. I brought flowers. I'm doing the same thing this guy's doing. He can't see the difference Difference. in the It's not about what you're saying, but it's how you're saying it. Absolutely. And the reason, and the why. The why are you saying it? Mm -hmm. Harvey's saying it. I mean, ultimately they have the same goal, but Harvey's like trying to to build a relationship and trying to get like, and, and work on her own time. He even said, this is not the time. Right. right now, we'll talk about it later. And she goes, no, what do I have to do? He's like, well, okay. And then and he knew comes. that could happen, but he also wasn't going to press it. And mm-hmm. then Lewis just like, burr, 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 burr. he's like, let's talk about it right now. And here are the flowers. Check. I've done this thing on the list. Absolutely. Lewis needs to get his shit together. And he and then he ruins it for both of them. Yeah. Because, because she's, she's like, I'm not going to be a witness. I'm not going to help either one of you. So now he needs to find a new witness. And, and he, he goes, goes for <sighs> Inez. And he's like, I prefer the stick, but now he like usually prefers the stick, but now he's going to use the carrot. Mm -hmm. And he, she's like, okay, I have a paper trail. Turns out she was lying. And then they say that Lewis was bribing her with a position to work for Jessica Pearson, Mm -hmm. which Jessica was like, don't ever use my name Mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. No, no. And then he's like, I wasn't bribing. And then Harvey's like, you're an idiot. That's so dumb. You're ruining everything. And you can just see Lewis getting smaller and smaller, but angrier and angrier, but more desperate, more desperate. Yep. And then Harvey's really stressed because now he's got to fix this and Jessica's giving him a time limit. Mm -hmm. And we haven't really talked about Mike yet because we'll talk about his storyline in a minute. Yes. Mike comes in though, and he is very, very stressed. Harvey says to Mike, I need you to help me with this case. Mike says, what the hell do you want from me? You told me to fix my case. Why don't you go fix yours? Which honestly. And I'd like to now introduce a new section called Mike Drop. Oh! And I think that is maybe one of our very first. Does he do this more than once? I love this it. This is a mic drop. This is a mic drop, appropriate mic drop. I do feel like he's there to just like sometimes put Harvey in his place a little bit. Like this a little was a, to me, they're probably, if we went back and looked, because I have all these quotes, there probably are some other mic drops. This, this is one a mic felt drop. like a real mic drop. So I want to make sure you know this is a segment where we can introduce a mic, mic drop. drop. I'd also like to ask here, how do you feel about it being called a mic drop? In no, this I feel situation? good. I feel it's good. not a Michael drop. No, it's not. I'm, 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 he's Mike now. He's Mike now. Last episode, he earned his Mike stripes. I just want to make sure he's still wearing those Mike stripes. He's still wearing those Mike stripes. Loud and proud. I still found him. I think what it is, too, is in this one, he does stand up to Harvey in a mm-hmm. way that makes sense. And I don't feel like he's cowering or like trying to back out of things. I feel like he's facing things head on. Mm-hmm. And he is right. It's like, hey, Harvey, actually, you do it. I'm working on this other thing. Anyways... So we have to talk about the resolution of this case, though I don't know that we can without truly talking about the next storyline. Oh, yes. Because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, we got to kind of bring it all together. We have to bring it all together. But there is one thing that kind of stood out to me is that Lewis (laughs) went to a. Gun range. Yes. (laughs) That's what I was going to say before we leave. Can we talk about the gun range? Because he's it's, a great shot. He's a great shot. It's also so surprising that he's there. Harvey's like, what is he doing here? Harvey does. He, Lewis makes him say, I need your help. And L- Harvey does say, I'm under the gun. And mm, I need your I help. I mean, it was really that, Is that when you fell in love with Harvey? No, I've. it's been a long time coming. <laughs> I just think it's like, he's so quick. Look at how smart he is. He's so funny. He's, not like he's so good at did, puns. It's, it's, he's so good at reading his script that a writer wrote for him. There's a couple of things that I'd like to point out here. First of all, this is not the first time here in Suits where they've had to go run an errand real quick. 
And I was recently in New York City, mm-hmm. and it is not that quick to, to run an anything. errand, even if you have Ray driving you, even if you, you know what I'm saying? No. Like, you can't just get back and forth. So no. the fact that this gun range is either next door to their law firm. Absolutely In not. downtown New York. No. Or it's further out. It's on, like, Long Island. It's on Long Island. But Harvey's on a time crunch. So, like, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I get for the show we did it. Right. But there are going to be a handful of times where I'm going to call BS on how quickly they got to one location that's, and back. Yeah, that's a really good point because I'm thinking we're that's here in Dallas, trip. Texas. And it's we're, like, oh, yeah. Oh, you're going to the gun range for, like, a, a five-minute outing? Right. right. You know, it's it's close. There's one, like, down the highway. Is there? Yeah. Oh, okay. In Mis- <laughs> yeah, I've never been. Okay. I've never shot a gun. Okay. Oof, they're scary. They are scary. Um, But Lewis does shoot a gun. Okay. And he is a good shot. And also that's something to couple with the fact that he loves Queen. Just learning so much about this man. Okay. Here's my second question for you. Okay. Where do you go or, and now you have three children, so I know mm-hmm. it's a little bit harder. Or did you go or would you like to go when you are stressed and you just need a break? Okay. I either like to just go for a walk, like just walk out of my house and just, just walk. Hope the kids are okay. I just, I hope they're okay. If the kids are with me, I put them all in the car. Okay. And we go for a drive. Okay. Because then everyone is secure. Okay. No one can get into anything. Okay. And a lot of times they'll fall they'll asleep. They'll fall asleep. I can listen to a podcast. Okay. I can listen to some music. I can drive through, get a little chai latte. Mm-hmm. That's like the thing to do That's for me. Okay. Yes. What do you do? I, I walk. You know, I'm a big walker. Mm-hmm. So definitely... Uh, walking what i used to do at dch and you were one of the only people who knew this i would sneak over to the restaurant local oh gosh which we both love yes and i would just go take a break over there i would sit at the bar and order the tomato soup with the grilled cheese sandwich and have a glass of wine and it was great the bartender will was always wonderful and it was wonderful because nobody else from the theater was running over to local to grab a bite to eat. Right. Because it's like this super nice, small. And I wasn't even eating the nice stuff. I mean, I was eating just. You know, right. You were I a true would, local. A true. And I would sit at the bar and met all kinds of cool people, became friends with some people that invited me to their house for dinner. And it was really a nice place to go that felt kind of like an upscale cheers. Yes. You know, yes. that I could yeah. get away and not have to talk to anybody. Sometimes I'd take a book and read and it was wonderful. So yeah, I miss, I do miss that. Yeah. A little sneak over to local. We need to have a little sneak over spot. Yeah. We need here to in sneak the, over. Here in, in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. You can just come over here and hang out. I'll just do that. Okay. okay. Sorry. Going to, there's going can, to local. There's literally a, a can of Campbell's tomato soup in the kitchen. So if you'd like to, you can make yourself. A I'm getting pretty good at grilled cheese. Okay. So. There you go. Yeah. So let's start talking, I guess, about... Michael. Yeah, the Jerome Jensen case. Jerome Jensen. Yes. Jerome Jensen, longtime client of Harvey. He's an his IPO da- guy. Yes. His daughter, Lola, has a fake ID and he thinks that she is up to something. Because she's not like 18 with a fake ID going to Cozumel. She's <laughs> she's a, a grown person uh-huh. with a fake ID. And before I go any further, my next question is, have you ever had a fake ID? No. And Yes. I've never had a fake ID, but I had my own ID, and you could do something called chalking with mm-hmm. a New York State license. Okay. So I turned my 88 into an 86, Okay. and then I was able to get in places two years earlier. Okay. What is chalking? You just I just took a little white color pencil, and I just changed my um, 8 to a 6. Oh. That's it. That's it? Yeah, that was there it. There you go. Okay. It worked for two years. Well, there you go. Isn't that incredible? It was incredible. And then one time when I turned actual 21, I still had my New York license and someone wouldn't serve me because they thought it was a fake. And I was like, no, no, no. (laughs) This is actually real now. This is, this is, I'm truly, I'm truly 21 now. Okay. Did you ever have a fake? Oh gosh, no. I've looked like I was in my forties since I got my braces off in high school. (laughs) (laughs) Did you not even need one? Uh, I did, you know, so the big bars to go to in College Station. Carney's was the one that we all went to, and you only had to be 18, not a problem. Because uh, it was 18 to drink, or you just had to be 18, 18 to, get to get in? in. Oh, so smart of Carney's, because this was like... Because we could totally underage drink. Yeah. Not that I did. And then Blarney Stone was across the street. You had to be 21 and up. And also they had dollar wells until 9 oh, p.m., which yeah. is just... Oh my gosh. Yeah, you, had, you could only order two at a time, but you could order two, go put them at your table, and come. it was crazy. There's a place at UT that did Happy Minutes... Oh, I think you've told me about and this. It was like for like 30 minutes, it was 50 cent beers. 
And so you just get in line and keep going. I only went once and then they got shut down. Oh. So. That's a sad time for them. It was a sad, it was a sad minute. Yeah. No, I think actually I used somebody in my sorority's old ID just to get in, but no. No one ever. Nobody's ever carded me. Once I got my braces off when I was 16, I looked like a middle-aged businesswoman. <laughs> but you I also like would to, wear, like, blazers. I wore suits to homecoming. So, I mean, literally, I've been working. My mom and I talked about this recently. I've been working all my life for this because I went to two different high schools. Not at the same time, of course, but we moved. And I wore a suit to both homecomings. This is it. This yeah, is I mean, it. I've always, I mean, this I have is... so many blazers in that closet. You know that. I could blaze up any day I wanted to. So... I could blaze up, but not in the dime bag way. No, in I, would, the blazer. I would have no idea how to do that. But in a blazer suits way. Yeah. Speaking of, my dad cl- clarified on uh, Christmas Eve what a dime bag was. Mm-hmm. And I was with your mother, actually. Yes. And so they had to explain to me what a dime bag was. And and do you feel like you learned? I It's it's how much it cost. It was $10 back then. That's why it's called a dime bag, mm-hmm. even though years later. Yeah, I mean. Inflation and all. Sure. Mm-hmm. That's wow. called a dime bag. Also, he said if I needed to learn how to roll, because I don't know how to roll a joint, so he, know, he knows how to roll a joint. He would tell you? Yeah, he would show me. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's an incredible dad. Uh-huh. Wasn't that nice of him? <laughs> So anyways, we've got Jerome Jensen. He has come to them because Lola is doing something that's beyond trying to get into the Blarney Stone. Right. Or Happy Minutes or whatever. He needs his help. Harvey's busy. And so he kind of puts Mike on the case. And he says, why can't we just hire a private investigator? Harvey says, because a private investigator can't fix this. He can only do the discovery. Right. Exactly. You know, for all intents and purposes. Which isn't going to help. We need someone who actually goes in there, learns what the problem is fixes it and harvey says you know i'm more like his robert duvall and the godfather i'm his conciliary which Mm -hmm. i'd heard that word before but i didn't actually really know what it meant do you know what it means i looked it up no i also noted this because i've never seen the godfather i haven't either oh my gosh dang are we gonna have to do a a special edition of godfather yeah because i know it's like an important we should know it we should know it but i bet we would know what consigliere is if we watched the godfather well according to the internet (laughs) it is a member of a mafia family who Mm. serves as an advisor to the leader and resolves disputes within the family Uh, okay okay so 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 michael is kind of mike is the consigliere well harvey's saying he is that to jerome jensen and then then mike says but if you're coming to me for help to solve this then i'm also like you're robert duvall right and, and he's yes like, oh, okay no. uh-huh. yeah. yeah that's why it gets it, but it got confusing because i was like as soon as they started talking about godfather i was like i don't know what they're talking about you mm-hmm. know could have figured it out didn't figure it out so he sends her he sends mike on his way mm-hmm. mike goes off to try and figure this out he comes back and he says, "I th- he figures out that Lola is taking money from her father's company. And her fake identity is for an oil person. Yes. Claritin Drilling is the name of the company. Mm-hmm. As the assistant controller at Claritin Drilling. And this isn't great because she's taking money. Because she's upset because her father has done wrong. She's also embezzling. Yeah, she's embezzling. So this is lots of embezzling. So much embezzling. There is no doubt that there's definitely, we have an identity of embezzlement here. This is. In this episode. Yeah, it could have been called embezzlement. It could have just been called embezzlement. Yeah. Mike tries to come back and explain to Harvey what he thinks is going on. Harvey says, I didn't ask you to explain the problem to me. I asked you to fix it for me. I love that. Best leaders are those who delegate. <laughs> That's one of the quotes that you love. That's, one. That's I like, love I that love, quote. I love Harvey. He's so suave. He's so smart. This quote, go do it. <laughs> go do it. He is, because the best leaders are those who delegate. Yes, That's true. a quote I do love. No, it is true. That Oh, does he say that? No, I say that. <laughs> I learned it from my boss at Johnny Carinos when I was in college. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Leaders, good, le- best leaders do delegate yeah. and trust the people to do it. Do yeah. it. He's not Why micromanaging. Why would you hire somebody to do something? For right. You, you could also give them a little like pat on the back, you sure. know, listen to them. Yeah. Well, they've had a little tiff though. That's true. It's true. So Mike needs to get the corporate card from Harvey because he thinks he's going to fix this. Before that, Michael, Mike does note that fake IDs are hard to make after 9-11. Oh, yeah. Which reminded me that this was filmed closer to 9-11 than it was to present day. 
Well, it's filmed in 2010, probably, if it came out in 2011, or maybe they were filming in 2011. Yeah. Because so the first like, episode was so like in July halfway. 2011. You know? It's only 10 years. Yeah, yeah. That, they, that they called it out. Yeah, I was like, what a weird... Because when it happened, I was like, weird to mention 9-11. Like, not like I've forgotten. But it but was like, 22 years ago. Yeah. You know? Interesting. It's, yeah. Anyways. I'm not going to ask you where you were on 9-11, because then it's going to get real somber. I was in eighth grade. I was in a... 18... You were in Cozumel. <laughs> I'm always in Cozumel. <laughs> I was in an 18-wheeler. <laughs> Oh, yeah, selling toilets. Selling toilets. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, okay, so <laughs> okay. Mike needs the corporate card to try and fix this. Yes, he needs it. He's not going to tell him why. Harvey's not going to ask why. And he just says, if you bring that back to me and it smells like a stripper, you're fired. To which I was thinking, Harvey, don't you just pay for sex workers with cash? Well, also, why would it smell like a stripper? What's he doing with that card with a stripper? I think, like, when something smells fishy. Ew! Oh, oh, no! Ew! Oh, cut that. That's not what I meant. No! <laughs> That's not what I meant. I meant, like... No! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> That's not going in our podcast. I meant when it's, like, suspect. <laughs> I did not mean... I can never come back from that. <laughs> I did not. That's not what I meant. Oh my gosh. I have to take a picture of you. I'm going to die. <sighs> okay. Are you okay? We're okay. We're... No one will ever know what you just said because you're going to. Well, do you want me to keep it in there? I mean, it was a good pun. It's not what I meant. I, You know what I meant. I know what you meant. Yeah, that card smells fishy. Okay. Yeah. So Mike needs the corporate card. <laughs> <laughs> Mike needs the corporate card and he can't bring it back smelling like fish. <laughs> He can't. I didn't mean it that way. I know. But now Mike's thinking that and he's like, can't go to Long John Silver's. Can't go. I don't even know how I'm going to do this. Mike takes the corporate card. He does not go to a strip club. That's true. He actually goes to take this family to a nice restaurant. Tample Gardens or Tampa Gardens or something Tam- like Some place that, that they like. Uh, yeah. You know? Nice touch is what It's Lola a nice says. touch because it's a place that they've been. Mm-hmm. The dad is like, I've raised a thief. Mm-hmm. and But really, he's just raised an environmentalist. And she is stealing. And she is stealing. And she's stealing because she wants to give back to help the people that have been poisoned by her dad's company. Her company she- is Loxley LLC, Robin of Loxley. Right. It's like Robin Hood. Mm-hmm. So she's like, she thinks she's a good person. He thinks she's a bad person. He's like, we are working. They just, what it is, is she wants his attention. He wants her to love her. They want to get along or else they would have done, they haven't pulled the trigger. That's right. what Harvey tells Mike, really. Mm-hmm. But this meeting goes horribly. It, it, it goes so horribly that Jerome says to Mike, I came to Pearson Hardman to take care of this. Instead, my daughter and I are further apart than ever. Which was kind of a little dramatic. like... Yeah, it was dramatic and it was very heavy-handed to say that. It was another eye-roll moment It was kind of me. an eye-roll moment. Um, I was like, get over yourself. I think yourself. part of it is the way that he delivered it. Yes, very pointed mm-hmm. to Mike. Yes. So obviously, Mike's got to try and fix this. But instead, Lola surprises Mike at his apartment. Because Lola is embezzling money she's saving the environment she's also a hacker and she figured out who mike is Mm -hmm. and not only who mike is but who mike really is and that mike never went to harvard Mm -hmm. and is not a lawyer she comes and tells him calls him on it says leave me alone or i'll expose you i was not expecting this i wasn't either the first time i saw it i was shocked were you that this is who uncovers mike I was like, oh, just some client is going to uncover Mike? Yeah. I was literally like jaw on the floor, shocked. So Mike is very panicked. He's which super is, panicked. And 
Harvey's like, it's an empty threat. And he's like, are you kidding me? I'm not worried about your client. I'm worried about my life. Right. Which is why he blew up at him and said, why don't you tell me to fix your case? Why don't you, why don't you help me fix mine? Yes. And then Mike decides I'm going to go tell Mr. Jensen how it is. And I would argue that we have another mic drop moment when he says, your daughter isn't the problem, Mr. Jensen, you are. Yeah. I mean, he, Mike Stripes glowing in the dark right there. Yeah. He is really, <laughs> you know, I'm proud of him. He's he just, learned from Harvey. I don't know if he learned from Harvey. I think he's like a man who's just like lost, possibly lost it all. And so he's just like, I have nothing to lose. I have nothing to lose. He's like, I'm he's your not attorney. Afraid. It's my job to give you advice, but you're her father and it's your job to raise her. Mm-hmm. That's a lot coming from a guy who doesn't have any kids, by the way. That I is... think if Mr. Mike would have told me that, I would have said, a goodbye. Yeah. And I would have been like, get out, little bad boy. I'm going to put you in the car and we're going to go drive around where it's secure and get a chai. <laughs> you need to be secured. And, and have a little, they need to calm down a little bit. Yeah. We'll listen to some Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, is that what y'all listen to? Right now we are listening oh, to you were singing that when you got here. Uh, disco Dancing Dinosaur Party. Oh, okay. Can't get it out of my head. Okay. Well, no need to put it into anybody else's. Disco Dancing So anyways, dinosaur party. Um, <laughs> next up, <laughs> Lola, then they decide, Lola, they're going to bring her in to help figure out what's going on. Yeah, they bring her in to, mer- like, they're merging these cases. Well, Mike stable, and Harvey Yeah, very together. much an overlap. Two embezzlement cases. We're bringing them together. Lola mm-hmm. comes in and she hacks in and looks at these bank accounts where we think Maslow has been embezzling money for right. stable shelters. Mm-hmm. They find 16 accounts, or yes. 16 banks where it could be. Yes. This is where we have to bring Lewis in. Because he gets it. And he's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. The way he's like, okay, they would never go to these banks because these are U.S. They have U.S. parent banks and they'd be exposed. It would never go to this bank because this bank is not solvent and nobody would ever put their money there. They wouldn't go to this bank because this bank has uh, fought all these subpoenas. Like boom, 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 boom. Louis Lit. Louis Lit is in the house. He is firing it off, and Harvey's just kind of looking at him like, yeah. They figure it out. They figure it out so fast with the help of Louis. It's like this is when I cried. This is when I cried. Wait, when did you cry? When they go in to confront Matt? No, up? when they're all sitting at the table. They're all sitting all in like the comfy chairs and they're all three of them are sitting there. And it's just like no one is wearing the skin suit. You know, like no one's wearing like the little kid in the big suit. Everyone is just there existing, they're their, bringing they're their, their well-fitted talents. trench coats, not two kids in a trench coat. Absolutely. And they are just all sitting there bringing what they have to offer to the table. And I just teared up. I teared up. I love that you teared up then. I didn't tear up then. The next scene when they go to confront Maslow. Oh, you teared up then. I also, I smiled big in that scene. This is one of those ones we've talked about earlier where I've had to rewind them a couple of times Uh because I love them so much. Oh, gosh. I will say it. I love this scene so hard. I wish that we could put it on the screen and watch it. We should watch it after we finish recording. Can we just watch it just for... Yes, just, just to fun. watch it. Yes. And we can record ourselves watching it. Yes. If the people would enjoy. I <laughs> If it pleases the court. If it pleases the court. If it pleases our listeners and our viewers. I love this scene. Oh my gosh. I, I just, I can't Because they're it. so on the same team. They're on the same team. They stand up at the same time. They button their jacket. Like they're just in sync. They look at each other with confidence. It's such a different vibe. And this wham bam, thank you, bam yes. business is so good. So good. When they call him on the seven bank mm. accounts, yes, I did that. You can track it from Sri Lanka. It's all legit. He goes, I can show you the records. That's great. And I, this is where it starts. And Louis goes, That's great. Isn't that great, Harvey? It's so great. I know. They're I just yes this. anding. They're each so other. yes anding. And then Lewis says, Could you uh, tell us about the seven safety deposit boxes that you opened on that same day? And Harvey is sitting there. He has turned and faced Lewis to let Lewis like have, have the, the moment. moment, have the yes. limelight, take the stage. And he's got this sweet specter smile. Okay. It's, it's the so triple cute. S. Yes. As he's looking at Lewis, he's like, we have, we have video of you. And then they say, I don't have to answer that. Uh, and his, and Maslow's attorney says, this isn't a de- deposition. And then my favorite is when Lewis goes, you're so right. It's more of a presentation. It's so it's sharp. So good. And, he go, and then Harvey goes, we can make it a presentation or a trial. Like they're going back and forth and they're just, they're bo- just having this so much fun. So much fun. I loved them together in this scene. Me I loved too. them independently in the scene. I, I loved, loved them. I loved this scene so much. 
they so good. freaking nailed they it. They nailed him. They nailed him. Naslo, I don't know what your hierarchy of needs are when you go to prison, but no, he's not going to prison. There's no criminal. No, because he's just going to give all the money back because he yeah, just stole just all that so money from that nice nonprofit lady. Yeah, no, this was so oh my good. Gosh, I love they, this they scene. They trusted each other. Oh, it was. It was peak. Right? It was peak suits for me. It was. So far. That was the highlight of, I mean, them all sitting together, highlight. Then this moment, a highlight. This, rewatched it. Right before you got here, I rewatched that scene. I was on a high watching that. And then it all came tumbling down, if I'm being honest. <laughs> then I was literally smiling. Tears welled up in my eyes. It should have ended there, honestly. But it didn't because this show is just throwing me on an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. Because right after that, I mean, some other things happened. But right after that, pretty much, Lewis is walking around and he is so happy. And the associates, he's just like, he's tapping you're, people doing like you're doing great. You take the day off, blah, 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 blah. He's like so happy because this was such a great moment. And then he sees in the office Lucille from the nonprofit mm-hmm. giving Harvey a hug with Jessica. And it's like, guess who isn't included in this big congratulatory thing? And he is clearly devastated and heartbroken and hurt. And it wasn't like they were doing that on purpose. It just happened. Harvey happened to walk Walk by by and get pulled in. Right. And Harvey even says, like, you got to meet Lewis Lit when he's in this room. Lewis doesn't know that. No one goes to introduce Lewis to them. So all he sees is this whole thing happening and then everyone leave. And he's like, of course you're cutting me out to Harvey when he sees him. Of course you're cutting him out. And Harvey says... I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't think of doing that. And that's your problem right there. I know. But can I say something here? Yeah. I really felt for Lewis. It was a misunderstanding. And Harvey made it kind of about him here. He's like, I wouldn't do that. You're wrong about me. And he could have just been like, I can see why you would think that. That's not what happened. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think Brene Brown was around much then. And so I'm not sure that either one of them would have said it that way. You know? If I could take a note from some of the self-help books that I've read. Since 2011. Since 2011. Brene Brown was definitely around, but I'm just saying, I don't know if she was peak. But you know what I mean? Like, it, it felt very like, come on, Harvey, you're so good with, like, other people. But when it's your own associate who's clearly, like, very upset and crumbly, he's like, I don't need to be suave for you. Suck it up and, like, grow up a little bit. I know. I I hear what you're saying. I feel bad for Harvey because he had just complimented Lewis behind his back, which is always the biggest compliment is when somebody it's compliments true. you behind your back. It's true. You know? Yeah. He had just done that. And then Lewis took him down. Da- you know, he's like, I was just talking about you. My God. Like, yeah. what else? Right. Right, right, right. So, but Lewis didn't know that. So it's like they're both. But Lewis don't... didn't take the time to ask because he was thinking about himself before saying what was going on in there. Yeah. He just went he ahead. He made a big assumption. And you know what happens went, when we assume. It's true. And he Harvey did. makes an ass out of you and me. You know? Lewis made an ass out of himself <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and himself. Yeah. I just really feel for Lewis there. I feel for Lewis many times in this show. Yes. Not right there. No, I don't know if I did. I don't know. I felt real sad. I was like, ugh. I was I also mad felt at him. Like, I was mad at him. I also, though, felt like it was true what Harvey was saying. It's going to be hard for Lewis to take that note yeah. right there. The way it was presented. Uh-huh. Hard to take that note. Yeah. As opposed to, he's not in a receiving space for that, you know? I really did watch a lot of Brene Brown. The other way this ends, this episode ends. Oh, yes. Is. What a treat. Is that Mike is just at the office and Lola comes in and she has hacked into the system of Harvard, gotten him a diploma, printed it out, and also put him in the alumni network. And then while she's showing all of this, Mike checks out her butt. He does check out her butt. <laughs> he checks it out her quick. butt. It's quick, but it's because he But it lingers. It lingers. It lingers. Yeah. He checks out her butt. And then Rachel comes in. And, and she she's sees leaving. that. And she's a little jelly. She is definitely jealous. And she's like, what was that all about? And he's like, oh, just a client thanking me. She's like, oh, what'd she, what'd she thank you for? And then he's like, oh, got me plane tickets to Greece. We leave tomorrow. Yeah. Early on Tuesday. Because yeah. we know what happens in Greece. Yeah, what happens in Greece... Doesn't comes stay, up, comes up in right, another conversation. Yeah. Doesn't stay in Greece. It, it comes it up in comes a up meeting whenever. with associates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not even appropriate. 
This was a really great episode. It was a, such a good episode. Ugh, so emotional. I'm glad that you liked it so much that you didn't, because we kind of had to record a little bit later tonight. Yeah. No, I was, I was and like, I said, I'm we coming. can do another nine if you need nope. to. You said, no, I'm coming over. I We need to watch this. We need to talk about this. We need to Because you've got to keep going. I have to watch episode nine. You know where all of this goes. I know. So I, feel like I you do have know more where it all goes, but remember, I'm like I've watched it leisurely the, twice. Right, right. I, like, I've never done it where I'm like, stop. Okay, right. hang on. I need to put this here. Because, like, I'll start one storyline and then jump down. Yeah. This is a very different experience. So, so different. Yes, I know. I don't know the minutia of each episode <sighs> like I do now. I know. I know. Okay. Predictions. Predictions. These are my predictions. These are my predictions. Is, first of all, this feels like too easy to have all the stakes of Mike not being a real lawyer completely erased. So I feel like there have to be ramifications for this entrance into Harvard. Okay. This feels too easy. I feel like Harvey's going to find out about it somehow and be pissed or something. That Mike got into the system? Yeah. Okay. Like now this is illegal or something. Like there's sure. something like something bad about that. There has to be. Okay. Right? Because that was such an easy fix and to have it discovered and solved in one episode feels too much. Okay. I still feel like Trevor's going to come back. Okay. Because he went to Montana, but then Mike kissed Jenny, and then what's going on there? I need to see more of that. Okay. Obviously, Rachel and Mike are getting hot and heavy at some point, right? Pretty soon, because they're talking about Greece. Okay. Also, Grammy, I think, is dead. I think she's dead or she's dying. Okay. I think this because where the F is Grammy? Where is she? Such an important character, such an important part of the beginning of the season. Where is she? You look at me when you say these things sometimes, and again, I don't know if you. Want I me don't to spoil want it. you to spoil it. I want to watch it, but I do feel like she's dead. She's dying. We haven't heard from her. Where is she? Mike's never even mentioned her again since like what episode three? That's five episodes without our main reason for this whole thing. I feel like I haven't seen her in a really long time. I feel like because you said in episode five, if she doesn't come back in episode six, that you were walking. And she didn't come back. But I didn't walk because I'm, I I am a coward. <laughs> you didn't walk. I said I made that statement because I thought she was coming back, but she didn't. And now you are like, I feel obligated to do this. Now podcast. I have to kill her off. <laughs> <laughs> Eleven years later. That's my predictions. Okay. That's what I got. We have just a few more episodes in this season. Isn't that crazy? How I time can't believe fun? it. I know. No, I can't believe it. It's going to, this whole thing is going to fly by so fast for you. And you're just, what happened to me will happen to you. I'm going to watch it three more times. Because you'll cry at the end because these people are no longer part of your life. I mean, I cried in this episode and we're only eight episodes in. I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I am yeah. so excited that you love it so much. <laughs> If you love it. Yeah, if you love it, you should be listening. We would love for you to listen. Subscribe. Uh, give us a five-star review. Oh, yes, please. And share it with anyone in your life who loves Suits or Recap Podcasts. Or if they just maybe kind of like us. Oh, yeah. Also, if they love us. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. We might like get us. more fans that way. Than we could with Suits. No. Impossible. Be, yeah. We, there's a lot of people out there who love Suits. Yeah. We would love, again, please share, subscribe, tell everybody about it. It keeps us... Out in the algorithms. In the algorithms. Is that how that works? Yes. Follow on YouTube, too. You can subscribe to our YouTube, yeah, our you'll TikTok. You'll see some clips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All those places. Yeah. We're on all of the things. All the things. We're on all the things. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you for our next episode. Thanks for sticking with us while we work out the keys. Thanks for sticking with us while we sing off key. Thanks for sticking with us through episode eight. Thanks for sticking with us. They think it's so great. Thanks for sticking with us. Even if you don't like sticky things. Thanks for sticking with us. The camera is blinking, blinking, blink. Dang. That was was good. Good job rhyming. Well, would you expect anything less?